Hello and welcome to this uh, webinar uh, from Toradex. Uh, I am Walter Minute and uh, uh, I am speaking from the Toradex headquarters in Switzerland. And uh, for this session of the webinar, uh, we have as a guest Hector Garcia Tellado from Microsoft. Uh, I will let him introduce himself and explain his role inside the uh, Microsoft Azure organization. Hi everyone, this is Hector here speaking from Redmond headquarters of Microsoft. Um, I am a senior program manager on the Azure Internet of Things engineering organization. Um, so this is the team that we're responsible for building the Internet of Things cloud services uh, in the Azure. Thank you very much Hector and thank you for joining uh, us for this uh, webinar today. Uh, as you can hear we are talking from uh, to very distant locations, but I hope that uh, the powerful technology we are used for our webinar is going to support us and keep everything running smoothly. Uh, this is the agenda for today's webinar. We just have three points, but we're going to go deep into these uh, topics. Uh, first of all, we uh, will introduce the, con the um, subject of the Azure IoT Suite and Azure IoT Hub, so we will uh, try to uh, better understand uh, Microsoft efforts on the IoT uh, side. Uh, then we will um, move a bit deeper into uh, the Azure IoT SDK, that is uh, the set of software components you can run on your devices and of course we are going to explain uh, which of those SDKs are supported on Toradex device, devices specifically and at the end we are going to show uh, a demo that we call Cloud Parking Demo people that have been visiting uh, the uh, Embedded World in Nuremberg a couple of months ago or the Build conference in San Francisco last month probably had the chance to see this demo and we are going to uh, talk a little bit more about it because I think it's a quite good sample of how you can use this technology in a real world scenario. A uh, few words about Toradex. Toradex uh, um, is a company making uh, computer on modules, system on modules. We have different terms to define them. Um, as I was saying, I'm talking from the headquarters that are in Switzerland, in Europe, uh, close to Lucerne. Uh, we have uh, an office in the United States, in Seattle. We have also offices in India. We have an office in China and Japan, uh, offices in Brazil and Vietnam. So we have a worldwide presence. Uh, we have different people taking care of technical support and this kind of issues and we also have uh, in many of those countries local warehouses so this is going to simplify all the delivery uh, process of our products. company has been founded in 2003 so it's quite old and well established for a company in this specific field and we have more than three uh, 3,500 customers worldwide. We target medium and small volumes um, and we try to make your life easier on the software side. That's why we have more software engineers than hardware engineers inside Toradex. It's not because we don't like hardware engineers. Actually, our hardware engineers are quite likable guys. But uh, uh, the efforts to maintain different operating system on different hardware platform and keep everything uh, up to date and try to fix all the bugs is quite an effort. So that's why in the company, we have more software people than hardware people. Uh, then I will leave to Hector a quick introduction about what Azure is. Yeah, thanks, Walter. So for those of you who are not familiar with Microsoft Azure is, uh, Microsoft Azure is essentially a Microsoft bet on cloud computing. It's a cloud computing platform um, that's meant for building, deploying, and managing applications um, through our global network of data centers. And um, what we mean with like um, any kind of infrastructure. So we have a lot of customers using, obviously, um, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or even software as a service. Um, and um, Azure is a rich in its OS, in its cross-platform, um, having um, support for not only Windows, but also Linux and so on. Uh, we have more than 30 data centers globally. And today, we provide more than 50 different services, including Internet of Things, middleware, databases, virtual machines, compute, etc. And um, our cloud platform is growing very, very fast and we have almost 120,000 new customers every month joining Azure. 
Thank you very much, uh, Hector, for this introduction. Seems that you are doing better than we do on the number of customers, but we are going to improve. <laughs> um, let's talk about the Internet of Things. Uh, first of all, uh, is this just a new name for embedded? Uh, I've been working on embedded devices since the end of the previous millennium, and uh, I've been talking about myself as an embedded software developer. Uh, should I just change my title as an IoT developer, just to sound much more uh, modern and cooler? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, Internet of Things is including embedded computing, but it's probably much more than this. Um, is just marketing hype? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, I think that there is a lot of marketing hype around IoT, but that now we are really starting to see some real-world uh, application of this set of technology. Uh, of course, there is still quite some uh, noise around this, and sometimes people just teach the IoT uh, um, tag to any technology just to make it sound more cooler. But uh, I think uh, this is something uh, that can be interesting. And it's not just about consumer devices. Of course, the most visible samples of uh, IoT devices, IoT system, are in the consumer space because this is what usually reach, uh, reaches millions of, of, of users. But uh, the underlying technology can be quite profitably used in industrial, medical, and many markets when, where we see uh, lots of our customer working. Uh, IoT is more than just a device connected to the Internet. Okay, I can connect my device to the Internet, but this is not IoT. Uh, IoT came up when we start to integrate this device with the cloud-based backend. Uh, we should change, maybe, I'm, I'm saying we because I have been an embedded developer for many years. Uh, we maybe have to change a little bit our current mindset and no longer think about the device and not just focusing about the uh, hardware and software running on the device, but thinking about a solution. So how we can provide more services, more features, and uh, how the cloud can support us in doing this. And I think in the uh, cloud parking demo we will see a couple of ideas about this. Um, the key point is that there is a lot of information hidden inside data. Uh, everyone is talking about collecting data, uh, getting data from many devices, uh, store uh, this data, and so on. Uh, Sometimes this, uh, this is also rising some uh, concerns about security and privacy and so on. But the key point is that data are not very valuable. What's really valuable is the information that is hidden inside this data. And the cloud is able to provide us the processing power and the tools to extract the useful information from the data. And we can feed back this information in the system to provide a better service. That's the key point. Uh, I used to say that uh, uh, finding information inside the data is like to find a needle inside the haystack, but the good thing about the cloud is that we can process many haystacks per second, so we can extract this information. And that's what I already, uh, already said, so connecting your devices uh, can really lead to new and better solutions, better services to your end customers. So now I will uh, switch back, uh, the, I will switch the presentation to Hector, uh, because now we are going deep into the uh, Azure IoT offer, so it's the best person to talk about this subject. Well, thank you, Walter. Yes, I'm going to spend the next 20, 25 minutes um, really going from the overview of what do we offer from an Internet of Things um, in Azure to, get, to actually get a little bit more um, in details of what are some of the services and how do we expose that ability to connect uh, multiple devices up to millions of devices um, from obviously everywhere in the world. Um, and the ability for them to unlock all that data processing that Walter was um, talking about. So when we think about Microsoft's view on, on IoT, we, 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 we tend to think it from two different approaches, right? On the one hand, we have what we call Internet of Things services, and um, these are essentially specific um, building blocks of functionality that we have in the cloud. For example, an IoT cloud gateway or um, um, streaming analytics um, service in order to process data in real time 
or um, service to connect to your business applications, service for visualization, etc. such that customers who kind of want to use this as building blocks, they're able to put together their um, architectures. And then we have what we call the Azure IoT Suite and their pre-configured solutions, which is, is, is an open source um, architecture that Microsoft puts together for you in specific um, IoT scenarios. Um, right now we have available remote monitoring, predictive maintenance, and uh, asset management is um, coming pretty soon. So what um, a pre-configured solution does is that with your Azure subscription, your Azure account, you're able to provision in the cloud an IoT architecture that we've put together for you that then turns out to be open source on GitHub so you can configure it and expand it. And we've seen that Azure IoT services resonate really well with like developers who kind of want to do their own thing and want to create their own architecture. And Azure IoT Suite pre-configured solutions work really well with uh, enterprises that just want to get a fast prototyping mode and really want to understand the different IoT scenarios and expand it from there quickly. Regardless of whether we're talking about the specific IoT services or the pre-configured solution, at the, um, at the end of the day, there's three different pillars that when we think about IoT and the cloud um, are involved. First is the, um, the one that obviously Totodex does on their day-to-day, -day, which is connect and scale with efficiency. And uh, from an Azure standpoint, what we have a client SDKs uh, that are open source as well and allows you to connect from any device that you want, from a uh, um, very powerful device such as a uh, um, a Raspberry Pi or like an Intel Edison or one of those most powerful Tonadex gateways to like real-time um, microchip level uh, almost in the wire that you need a footprint of a very, very low number of case. Um, so our, our, from a standpoint, we got you covered in the sense that you can connect from um, anywhere. The second piece is obviously analyze and act of that data. So those devices are, are sending massive amount of data um, on a daily basis and it's time to have the right services to private the analytics but also having a consistent device registry and having device management that allows you to uh, coordinate those devices through the life cycle. Obviously do roles and actions and provide dashboards and visualization to understand really what's going on all the time. And finally, the third piece that we're seeing that enterprises really care a lot is the uh, integration with the business processes. So for example, um, I was talking to a customer the other day and they were implementing um, a pilot where they're saying, in my manufacturing plant, if I detect a temperature anomaly pattern using machine learning in the cloud from the device that is coming from the plant, if the pattern is not normal, make sure you open a on 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 a Salesforce, right? So that kind of ability to mix in sensor data with machine learning and advanced analytics processes on the cloud, and integrating with business with processes or like the company processes, um, is what makes this kind of like end-to-end -end solution very powerful. So from an Azure IoT suite standpoint, what we have is a comprehensive solution. Our idea is to like help you connect with millions of devices and getting new insights. Um, we're putting a lot of effort in really uh, accelerate time to market because a lot of our customers actually come from the traditional embedded world and they don't necessarily have the, the, um, the biggest experience in the cloud developing. So really putting something together um, that is open source and they can like look through it, understand how it is built and then they can expand over it, it really helps them, helps them a lot. And then obviously leveraging a rich partner network um, like um, our friends from Totodex and not only on them on the hardware space but also on the on the system integrators and in the independent software value as well. Um, it's the pretty much the, the way to go on IoT. There's no such thing in IoT as like um, everything in one included because there's so many components that um, really our approach is uh, as open as we can. As I mentioned before, we're open sourcing everything that has to do and how to connect to our cloud. So we're able to cover as many partner and customer needs as possible. 
So now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what would it come in one of those remote monitoring um, pre-configured solutions. So I'm going to show to you how does the, um, the cloud architecture that we put together um, looks like. So really what's happening when he, a customer starts using Azure IoT Suite and for example the remote monitoring solution, when, when a customer thinks about remote monitoring, they're probably thinking about some kind of like visualization, obviously real-time uh, telemetry data, the ability to have rules and actions, the ability to connect multiple amount of um, devices. So we've engaged with a lot of customers over the last couple of years, understanding what do they really mean when they wanted to talk about a, a proof of concept of remote monitoring. And we've put it together for you um, so that this whole architecture spins out in around 10 minutes. So what's happening underneath is that there's a set of services connected to each other, starting from IoT Hub, which is our one of all these are the, the collection of services that I was mentioning before. They've just been put um, in order for you to consume as an architecture. So IoT Hub would act as the cloud gateway, securing device communication and ensuring bidirectional communication from the device to the cloud and also providing other features such as device management. And then IoT Hub connects with other backend services such as Stream Analytics who provides the um, real-time processing of data and at the same time it stores the data in blobs for for the data to be consumed as, as in what we call um, the call path, right? The call path meaning I want to kind of like look at the data later as opposed to the hot path when you want to make sure you process and analyze the data uh, in real time. Then there's the event hub which is our service that will that will make sure that data gets gets placed um, into a visualization mode through the web jobs and um, obviously DocumentDB is a no relational database that we use to store specific information and then Logic Apps is the apps that respond responsible for um, connecting through this business such as SAP, um, Salesforce, or Microsoft Dynamics. All this architecture is, is uh, secured using Azure Active Directory and the visualization is provided in Power BI. Um, but what's really cool about this, as I mentioned before, is that this way of um, stitching the services, if you will, is not proprietary. We, we just decided to put this together and we understand that this architecture may not work for everybody and that's why we've, we've made it publicly available um, so that anybody can actually customize it to their needs. On the left side as well, we see the devices connected and I want to re-emphasize again the tremendous amount of flexibility that our client SDKs provide. We have client SDKs available today for C, for Java, for Node, for Python, and for C-sharp, and um, depending on the device characteristics and the customer needs, um, it, they pretty much can run on, on any kind of devices supporting multiple protocols, of course. So the whole idea of this is help customers go from what you see on the left, which is a prototyping phase of the remote monitoring solution. So this is how remote monitoring looks like when you provision it with your own Azure account, and actually go from there in a customizable way to get into a real business application, right? How do you go from having something that's a prototype to have a real fleet management application where your sensors are inside a truck and you're able to track and you're able to predict um, the um, condition of um, something, for example, like fish or um, vegetables? And how do you use advanced analytic models to predict, depending on the, fr on the fright that you're uh, transporting, um, the different behaviors that you're going to have, right? Because um, it's very different to obviously be transporting, uh, I don't know, tires or wood versus being transporting um, something um, as a produce like fish or vegetables or meat or things like that. So now I want to go a little bit deeper and talk specifically about Azure IoT Hub, which is the, um, the service in the Azure cloud that specifically acts as an IoT gateway. So IoT Hub, as I mentioned before, it's a service that is entirely designed for IoT. And when we thought about that, uh, we really want to make sure we had scale up front. So 
we've done internal testing and we have customers asking for connectivity up to millions of devices. So we ensure that connectivity can scale at that, at that level. At the same time, we provide things such as bidirectional communication. So it's not only a service that allows you to send data from the device to the cloud, but also you can, you can do actions from the cloud to the device. So for example, um, if there's an, um, in order to continue with a temperature anom an anomaly example, you may decide that um, if you identify that kind of issue, you might want to shut down the device. Or you may want to put the device in quarantine for 10 minutes uh, or restart it or things like that. So all these kind of functionalities are available through IoT Hub today. And obviously, we, we have cloud scale messaging. We say a hey, device to cloud and cloud to device. Um, all the messages are, are, are durable. Um, we also expose um, telemetry ingestion. There's obviously, there's, you'll see in the architectural diagram in the next slide that there's um, different endpoints that we expose depending on what you do, want to do command and control or telemetry. But at the end of the day, it takes care of all this like delivery receipts, spikes, messages, a lot of things that are pretty um, tedious to code um, on your own and the service provides it by default. Another very important aspect is the per-device authentication. We require individual devices to have their own credentials and um, the ability to, you, you basically have to have um, a private key per device and we only connections, connections it's, it's, it's done through the obviously TLS. And um, for us, security is very important because consistently, as I'm sure you're aware, in, in the context of IoT, security is constantly ranked as the number uh, top three of um, blockers to adopt IoT solutions. So we're really putting a lot of thought in how to make sure all our um, solutions are secured. It also supports things such as connection multiplex in uh, single device cloud connection for all our communications. And as we was mentioning before, um, there's a rich amount of protocols that we support natively, AMQP, HTTP, and MQTT. But we also provide something called the protocol gateway, which is open source, and that allows you to, very, in a very flexible way, extend to the kind of protocol that you need. And um, just very recently, at the beginning of this month, we also announced the, um, a new gateway SDK which hasn't shipped yet, but it was going to come in the next few weeks. And then it allows you also to take that um, protocol translation to the edge. So you'll be able to do that um, from the hardware gateway as well. And um, we plan to obviously extend the FOC computing capabilities as well. And finally, um, super important in IoT as, as well as multi-protocol, multi-platform, right? Um, the device SDK is available for multiple platforms. As a matter of fact, the big majority of our customers, especially in industrial settings, they, <clears throat> excuse me, they, they don't even use any kind of Windows devices because um, for multiple reasons, they either footprint or um, because the devices are pretty niche for that, um, for that industry. So I would say the big majority of, of um, the production deployments are in things such as real-time OSs and Linux and others. And uh, we also have a service SDK that allows you to um, develop on top of IoT Hub on the back end, um, and that's available also uh, for Java and, and, and .NET. So deep diving a little bit so you guys have an idea of what it, how is it really connection happening. You will see that IoT Hub at the at this cloud level it basically exposes a set of endpoints. And you have an endpoint to do device to cloud and a different endpoint to do cloud to device. Um, and on the other side, so to speak, um, so for like the backend processing, is the exact same way. So um, all these client libraries that allow you to connect to IoT Hub are open source. So they provide to have as, as, as a flexible range as you, as you can. And the whole idea is to, 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 to turn this IoT gateway service into as flexible as possible to adapt to any kind of device need, any kind of backend you have, um, and any kind of like a, um, 
architecture, right? So obviously we have a device management identity API, message feedback and monitoring endpoint, and uh, we have a full um, developer's guide on Azure IoT Hub available on azure.com. Uh, I don't know if Walter will provide any links of it after the session, but I'll be happy to, to send also a link with uh, relevant links to the attendance as well if that's, if that's something of interest. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty simple. You can just search on the internet for Azure IoT Hub Developer's Guide and you'll see this kind of diagram explained in a, in a few pages. And as um, I mentioned before, uh, not only have we introduced an SDK um, for um, gateways, for field gateways, but we also have introduced an SDK for device management that would allow you to do things such as a firmware update, reboot, um, group your devices in IoT Hub um, in a logical way, take action on them logically, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So stay tuned for more information on on our announcement um, in the next few weeks. And yeah, I think this is what I had uh, from Azure IoT standpoint. And then of course I'll 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 stay around for questions as well in case any of the attendees have any questions. Thank you very much, Hector, for this uh, uh, very valuable information you you provided, you shared with us, and. Uh, now we, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, look on the uh, device side, uh, so just I have to quickly switch the slideshow. Now you should be able to see the uh, back my slides. Um, I was saying I'm uh, now talking about the device side, so what uh, uh, you can use to implement your uh, application on the device side and what we support as Storadex. So first of all, Microsoft has a partner program uh, on uh, Azure uh, IoT. The name, as usual with marketing name, it's quite long, so it's Microsoft Azure Certified Internet of Things Partners. And as you can see from this uh, screenshot, Toradex uh, is listed as uh, one of the, of the partners. Let's talk about the Azure IoT SDK. Uh, the first sentence here probably would have sound really crazy like two, three years ago. Uh, it's an uh, SDK from Microsoft and it's multi-platform and open source. Uh, those two keywords in the same syntax with Microsoft would have been really uh, rising eyebrows like two years ago, but as you, as you may have noticed, Microsoft has changed quite a lot, and a lot of the technology um, that it's related to Azure, it's really multi-platform, and uh, it's also open source, because as Hector was saying before, uh, the target is to connect different devices, so they can run different operating system, and of course, providing uh, open source component, it's quite an efficient way to allow people to customize uh, something to suit their needs. Uh, so if you want to look into the source code, the first link is the uh, official Microsoft repository uh, for the uh, Azure IoT SDKs. It's on GitHub. It's a quite popular platform to share source code. Um, and there you can download the official version. For some of the uh, platforms we support, specifically Windows uh, Embedded Compact, uh, some stuff has already been merged back into the official um, distribution. Uh, other things are uh, available on my personal uh, GitHub uh, repository. But um, our goal is to integrate everything back in the uh, official SDK, so we are working on uh, improving the integration on this site. Uh, as Hector was saying, um, we have uh, multiple languages and, uh, and platforms. Um, we support C, uh, or sorry, uh, the Azure IoT SDK support C. Uh, we support it on uh, uh, Linux and uh, Windows Embedded Compact, but it can be used also on, let's say, full Windows uh, operating system and on uh, some real-time operating systems like uh, Embed, and uh, TIOS. Those uh, small operating systems are also approved that this uh, SDK, the, uh, in particular the CSDK, is quite portable, so you can probably take um, a specific implementation. Uh, you can take a, um, 
an implementation specific, for example, for embed, and if you are using a different real-time operating system, you can probably quickly port it. Um, many developers in the Microsoft ecosystem really love and appreciate C Sharp, and uh, it's also supported on uh, the full .NET framework, uh, but also Windows 10 IoT Core, and our colleague Brandon from the office in Seattle managed to make it work also on Mono, so you can run it on Linux. Uh, uh, there is support for Java, for JavaScript, as Hector was already saying on Node.js, we support this uh, on Linux. And of course, there is also support for Python, so uh, this is uh, quite commonly used on Linux, but you can also run it on Windows 10 IoT Core. So this is the current state uh, of what we support uh, as Toradex. Uh, on Windows 10 IoT Core, we visit the C Sharp environment. Uh, on Linux, C, C Sharp, Node.js, and Python. And the Windows Meta Compa 2013, we uh, use the C SDK. Uh, this is um, something we already discussed before, so we support different protocol, uh, HTTPS and uh, some messaging related protocol. The key point here is that probably HTTPS is the easiest protocol to support, so um, it's, it's probably going to work in any kind of network. Uh, AMQP, MQTT maybe require some uh, uh, care to be enabled on corporate network and this kind of uh, secure connectivity, but on the other side they are designed for messaging and this uh, usually reduces the communication overhead. This is uh, important, uh, for example, if you pay for, for uh, the amount of data you are exchanging, and also it's a bit better for timely notification because on each DP you have some polling from the client to the server. Let's talk about the demo we implemented for the embedded world. Uh, we name it uh, cloud parking demo. Uh, you are not supposed to be parking in the cloud, but it's related to parking anyway. Uh, we decided some points about the demo when we started to think what we were going to show at the embedded world. Uh, the first point is that we were willing to show uh, a real world solution, meaning uh, something that applies to the real world. Um, we have seen many cool demos uh, where you can turn on an LED from a web browser or something like this. This is quite cool, but probably it has really not many applications in the real world. We wanted to show something that can have some application. And to do this, you have to solve a real world problem. And uh, probably everyone uh, knows the issue about parking, finding a parking place uh, and all the issues related to this are quite problematic in many cities around the world, so this is definitely a real world problem. Uh, another important point from uh, our point of view was to integrate different devices, operating system and languages, uh, so we could show that all the devices you can make using Toradex hardware can be easily integrated into a cloud-based solution. Uh, on the other side, this is also useful for our customers because many times if you are developing uh, part of a more complex system and complex solution, uh, integrating different things, it's, it's really not a choice, it's a requirement. So uh, this point is quite useful to illust also illustrate a real world system, not something you just design on a, on a design board but something you you can implement in the real world. Uh, we have a partner ecosystem. Uh, you will find some more information about this on our website. So uh, another goal was to involve some partners and we managed to do it. Uh, we involved Qt Company who developed uh, two devices for this demo. Uh, we involved Zulke. Um, that is a company uh, developing many different kinds of software. In this specific demo they uh, helped us developing the cloud-based backend and the web front-end. And uh, last but not least, Shikino uh, provided us some USB uh, cameras uh, suitable for industrial use, so they can provide some specific hardware in this field. We wanted also to make something eye-catching, so having some model cars around was definitely a good point for the engineers at the Embedded World or other events. And this is the end result. You can see it in the picture. Uh, it's a model with two parking lots. Uh, we developed, we made two parking lots because really we wanted to show how networking 
these things can really improve the, the final solution. So showing a single one uh, was not enough. We wanted to show two just to give the idea of a network. Uh, of course, this is not a real-world ready solution. It can apply to real-world problems, but of course, it's not really uh, ruggedized to survive in the re real world. Uh, just to give you a sample, it's fully relying on connectivity. Of course, if you implement such a system in the real world, you should provide some kind of fallback mechanism if the connectivity to the backend is not working to, let's say, make things more or less working for people just to not stop them inside the parking lot, for example. Um, of course, this is something you have to do if you plan to implement such a system in the real world. We decided to not do this, of course, because first of all, the resources and time we had to develop the demo was not infinite. infinite. And second point, because we we are going to release a good amount of source code for the, about this demo, and we wanted to keep the source code easy to read and to understand and quite minimal, and adding fallback mechanism and this kind of stuff is usually make things much more complicated. Of course, it's something you have to do uh, in the real world, but we wanted to keep a sample as clean as we can. Um, but this system is still using some components you can reuse in a real world solution, the Azure SDK of course, and also the backend has been implemented reusing some components developed for, for applica real world application. And yeah, last point, I was already talking about this, uh, we, will, we would like to provide a good sample, so keep it simple. Let's talk about the um, general architecture. Uh, we have different devices that connect to a backend uh, using Azure IoT Hub. So most of the uh, information exchange between devices and backend, it's uh, passing through the IoT Hub. It's using both directions because of course devices are providing some information like, okay, I recognize the license plate and on the other side the backend it's triggering some actions like open the gate or close the gate or whatever. Um, we have a web-based front-end, uh, so users and those administrators can uh, access some additional services, like they can book a parking spot. This is something that is not uh, so easy to do in a, uh, let's say, traditional implementation with a closed system running uh, on site. It's much more easy to integrate this into a cloud-based backend. And you can also provide some additional services, like mobile applications, or uh, I don't have to choose the specific parking place. I just have to tell the system I want to go in that place, and the system is finding a parking space for me in the parking lot that it's uh, more convenient to reach my final destination. And if you think about the parking a lot system managed by, for example, uh, city administration. Then you can leverage these features, for example, to um, have the traffic flowing uh, to all the available parking lots and not maybe having all the people driving in the same place. This can improve the traffic, can improve also uh, life for people because they are going to reach their destination easily and quickly. Uh, we have also REST-based API that is used by the management console, that is the application that is showing um, some information extracted from, from the data we have. Um, and the point is that most of the devices we're going to see are dedicated single-purpose devices. Um, this is what we use to call embedded devices. Uh, uh, they are still embedded devices, but they are connected to a cloud backend, so they are part of an IoT solution. Uh, in terms of devices, uh, we made a gate controller. Uh, the main purpose of the gate controller is to scan license plates. Um, we decided to use this device to show how you can take some high-level um, windows, uh, the same operating system you are running on your PC probably right now, uh, and use them on embedded hardware. Uh, so we use our Colibri T30 uh, running Windows 10 IoT Core. This is available as a kit, uh, also in our web shop. It's been developed using C Sharp, using the Universal Windows Platform application um, concepts from Microsoft. So it's really the same kind of application you can develop for your PC, but running on an embedded device. 
the second device is the parking controller. It's the device that is taking care of the, let's say, low-level hardware, like opening and closing the gates, uh, using some sensors to detect if the car are on the parking spots, uh, using some LEDs to notify which parking spot has to be occupied, which one has to be freed, or which parking spot are booked, uh, and also a small display to show the number of available parking spots. Um, main point about this device was to show how you can use uh, entry-level platform, the Cordable VF50 is our entry-level module. It's quite cost-effective and you can run Windows Embedded Compact 2013. We still have a quite loyal customer base on this operating system, so we wanted to show that you can use Windows Embedded Compact and do IoT. And uh, we develop a C application using our hard, uh, libraries to directly access the hardware. So if you look at the source code of this application, and we are going to publish it soon, uh, you will see that it's quite easy to access the hardware. Next uh, device is the payment terminal. Uh, this device has been developed by Qt Company, uh, of course using their own libraries, using C++. The SDK is uh, for the C language, but of course it's easy to integrate it into also C++ application. The device is running Linux, so another operating system, and of course its main purpose is uh, paying for the parking, so probably this is the less entertaining part of the experience, so we try to improve it by providing a very dynamic, very eye-catching UI uh, with graphic effects and this kind of things, and Qt libraries are pretty good for this kind of application, so this was a way to demo also this specific aspect. Uh, a couple more devices we had, uh, one was the public display, this is the kind of uh, big displays you can see on top of highways or something like this. Uh, of course, everything was scaled down to fit inside the Microsoft boot, so you can see it in the picture. Um, we have a couple of LEDs panels um, showing the number of parking spots available in the different parking locations. Um, what were the goals for us in this specific device? We wanted to show how to use multi-core and real-time. Basically, what happens here is that that one of the cores, uh, of the two core of the MX6 dual light we use for this demo is dedicated uh, to the to show the information on the display. Uh, this kind of display really requires that you turn on and off each LED in time to refresh the image. So we are driving them at the lowest level. And of course, you need to provide some reliable timing, uh, otherwise you will see flickering on this kind of bad effects. Uh, Windows Embedded Compact 2013 has been used for this device, and this also proved the real-time capability of the OS. The, it's also a C application, and it's also using our libraries and the uh, Azure uh, IoT SDK for the C language. Last but not least, we have a management console. Uh, the idea is to have a device uh, not for the end users, but for the administration of the parking. So a person uh, that is taking care of one or two or whatever parking lots can have a device where you can in real time see the state of the different parking lots, which spaces are taken, which space, uh, spaces are booked, which ones are free, uh, if there is any issue, any device not functioning or something like this. Uh, this is also uh, an application developed by the Qt, uh, device developed by the Qt company, uh, and for this device they didn't use the Azure IoT Hub uh, SDK. Uh, of course they already implemented the payment terminal using it, so you can use it easily using also Qt libraries, uh, but they use a REST-based API, so invoking uh, an API based on HTTP request. This is is a different approach, but it can fit some uh, situations, and we wanted to show that you can still interact with the backend, even not using the IoT Hub. You can, depending on what you need to do, you can choose different um, routes to access the data in uh, inside your backend. And let's talk about the backend. The backend, of course, is running on Azure. It's composed by uh, different services. It has been developed completely in C Sharp. Um, so using, let's say, the familiar uh, development environment and tools people use to develop .NET application every day. Uh, it's using the Azure IoT Hub, as we say, to exchange data to uh, all the devices, uh, all but the management console. For the management, man management console, it provides a REST-based API. A good thing about this is that it makes it easy to uh, implement uh, uh, 
for example, mobile applications or uh, also to integrate our service with other um, services running on Azure or different platforms. And it's using a SQL database to store the data. So these data can also be processed using, for example, Power BI or other services provided by Azure. The front end is a website again running on Azure of course. Uh, it's using the APIs to communicate with the back end and uh, shows real-time information. So you can see, uh, you can just use any browser to access it and uh, as soon as someone is going to park a car or remove a car, uh, it's going to be updated in real-time. Uh, for the web-based part, we, I'm going to show a couple of screenshots. This is the booking part. So uh, as you can see, you can select a uh, garage or parking lot, whatever uh, you want to call them. Uh, you can select uh, your license plate. You can also have, of course, multiple cards registered to your account. Uh, you can select uh, w w what day and at what time you want to park there um, and also the duration. So you can book a parking place. This is uh, just a simple uh, additional service that it's really easy to provide if you have a cloud-based backend. And this is a, screen, a screenshot of the management console. So uh, it's uh, not that different from the uh, remote monitoring solution that Hector showed us. Uh, it has been implemented in a different way because uh, we wanted to reuse some components we already had. But the idea is to have different widgets showing the map, showing the real time a webcam view, and also showing in, again in real time the state of the different parking spaces. Okay, uh, I've been talking quite a lot about this. Uh, now I think the best thing uh, to do is to just let you see it in, uh, directly. Uh, I'm going to share a video uh, of, uh, that we recorded at the Embedded World. Um, there is a bit of background noise because of course it was inside the fair, so lots of people around, but I hope it's still quite clear to to understand. Um, it lasts for like five minutes, six minutes. Um, we are going to share this video on YouTube. You can already see a full video of all our demos at the Embedded World on our YouTube channel and we are going to provide a recording of the webinar afterwards. So I'm going to start the video and it's me and Roman Schnarrwiller. If you uh, already didn't understood this from my accent, I am Italian, but you will definitely understand this because I am the guy that is shaking his hand when speaking. Uh, this demo is uh, trying to demonstrate connectivity uh, using Azure IoT Hub. Uh, we support the Azure IoT Hub SDK on all our different platforms. Uh, it's an open source SDK, so we are uh, also able to port it on Windows and Compact. And uh, here we have a uh, management system. No, I would. I would like to see it. It's a uh, uh, performing different functions. The first one is on the iOS board. Uh, with the quality T30, uh, so a Tegra 3 based model, and the DVD is for the and for license plate recognition. I can put my car here, the system is recognizing the license plate uh, from a USB camera provided by Shikino, our partner. So I can park my car and then uh, the entrance gate close. Uh, all the interaction between the entrance gate uh, and the rest of the system are managed by a cloud-based backend developed by our partner Zuke. The second part of the system is the part that uh, manages the uh, low-level uh, hardware interfaces with the LEDs, with the sensor, with the servo engines driving the entrance uh, and exit gate. Uh, this system is uh, running Windows Embedded Compact 2013. And uh, uh, as hardware, we use uh, uh, VF50. It's our entry-level model uh, on a Viola carrier mode. So this is quite a, a cost-effective solution that can be used to drive many different other interfaces and also connect to Azure IoT Hub. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have uh, to pay for the parking. Uh, and the payment kiosk is uh, running Linux uh, on an IX6 dual core model and uh, we have a kiosk application developed by Qt company uh, of course using their own libraries. Uh, this is a good sample of a kiosk based UI. Uh, we can select our language. Uh, we have nice transition effect between the different screens and 
now we can pay for the parking. The system has required, uh, required the information about the pricing uh, and so on from the cloud. We got it back from the cloud and now we are ready to pay. We have an NFID card so we can quickly pay and now we are ready to drive out of our parking lot and we can, we can go. The main point of this system is really to demonstrate how you can have different devices uh, based on different kind of hardware, running different operating systems, uh, collaborating together to provide a solution. Uh, other parts of the solution are the management console. And this console is showing the state of the different parking lots, the two parking lots we are here in real time. So from any web browser, you can in any moment see what's happening in the different parking lots. If someone is paying and leaving, in a few seconds we have uh, the state of the system updated reflecting this change. Uh, we also have a management console device. Uh, this is uh, at the uh, company booth here at the United Europe. And uh, we also have a public display, the kind of road signs you can see on many roads here in Europe, uh, showing the number of free parking spots uh, in the different locations. Uh, this is also a sample of how having a cloud-based backend can provide useful services, because this information can be distributed from, from the cloud-based backend to all the different devices. Uh, an additional service we can provide is a bit for parking spot, and this is something you can do usually with traditional uh, parking spot management, uh, parking management system. But the heavy cloud-based backend make it really easy to integrate with the web front end to do reservation on this kind of things. Alright, so we're here at the Microsoft booth, and I also want to show you the, the part of our demo that we already explained before, the cloud parking demo. So, that one here is just a really small model also of the street with a, a public display and that little device you can see over here is actually also connected to the Azure Cloud over the IoT Hub and what we do here is we just show some general information of course quickly where our booth is located. Which is the most important thing here but also there's other information like how many parking lot spaces are available on certain parking lots and so on. So everything connected to the cloud, information will come from the cloud directly to this device. Then um, let's quickly go to our hub here at the Microsoft Group. What you see here is two different devices. It's um, One is running on Linux. It's an i.mx6 based product. And uh, it's a similar interface that you see you saw before at the parking lot demo on our booth. Um, this application was uh, developed by Qt, by the Qt company. Uh, it shows the current status of the, the parking system. And there is actually also a webcam at our main demo, so you can actually really see what happens in real time. So right now we see obviously there seems to be a car arriving and um, there will be parking, or probably it's, a, it's even a book. So it's a booked car that will arrive in the next couple of minutes. Let's move to the uh, questions, uh, uh, question and answers uh, part of the of the presentation. Uh, here we have some resources, of course, our website, our developer website. Uh, we have a community website, so there, if you have any question about the uh, Azure IoT SDK running on our devices or in general about our devices you can post some questions there uh, and the last link was uh, what um, Hector was mentioning during his presentation uh, so if you go to this link you can see uh, all the developer information about the uh, Azure IoT uh, technologies um, and you can see some code samples on uh, device and cloud side. Um, okay, if you have uh, any question, you can use the uh, tool provided by the webinar platform to um, ask questions. Okay, uh, I don't see any question popping up at the moment, but uh, I may have a question for Hector. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so it's not coming from the audience, it's coming directly from me, but I think it can be useful. Um, if you can tell us something more about uh, what we can do to uh, test uh, and to, let's say, play with this uh, technology on the Azure side. So maybe if I have a Toradex device, so I can run 
uh, one of the different SDKs. Uh, how can I do? Um, what what can I do to, uh, for example, uh, have a look into the remote monitoring solution and this kind of things? Yeah, sure. That's a great question. So, in addition to the developer center URL that um, you posted there. There. We also have our main landing page called internetofyourthings.com and uh, from there you'll be able to be directed to provision a remote monitoring solution and then we have tutorials for any kind of device that wants to be connected using the remote monitoring solution or the other big configure solutions. We also have a website called Azure Samples where we publish a lot of code samples. Um, and I would the third thing I would encourage um, folks to do is check out our GitHub because in our GitHub we also have a lot of like um, we have almost more than 80 samples on how to get started with different devices and of course if the customers already have Toradex um, devices like this is the case they will definitely see all the instructions there but they also can learn about other other different compatibilities and some of the cool things that um, other companies are doing as well. I hope that answered your question, Walter. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. The first one is not specific to IoT Hub, it's related to Windows 10 IoT Core. Uh, if I want to use the T30 with Windows 10 IoT Core, will you also provide official Microsoft support for the T30 in the future? Uh, right now, uh, we release this kit as a technology preview. Uh, we didn't label it beta or anything like this uh, just because we are still looking into the operating system and uh, honestly we are also um, considering the efforts Microsoft is doing on it. So we didn't make any statement about supporting it in the long term and everything. Um, we, are, we invested quite some resources and effort into having it running on the T30. Uh, we are supporting customers that want to uh, explore it to uh, see if it can fit their project and everything. Uh, we are asking you to provide us some feedback about this. So, okay, I tested it for this purpose. We have a project. We are thinking about using it. If we can collect enough information to uh, also come to Microsoft um, and uh, uh, sort of get more involvement from them probably we are going to support it but right now I can't give you a definite answer on this point. Um, are there any plans for Azure IoT SDK support for C Sharp and Compact Framework on WAC 2013, uh, Windows Embedded Compact 2013? Um, at the moment we don't have any plan. Um, I've been talking with some people, uh, Windows Embedded MVPs, um, that were thinking about supporting it. Um, we currently, uh, currently the existing implementation is a C library, so it's a static library, um, so you can't access it from, uh, from .NET. Uh, the first step would be building this uh, library as a DLL. Uh, so exporting directly the function. function. In this way, uh, you are going to be able to access those functions from the .NET framework um, using the interrupt functions. Of course, it's still not, uh, let's say, an optimal solution because um, you will need to um, wrap this into uh, a .NET object uh, and so on, but it will be a first step. Um, I'm going to integrate some modification and stuff in the, up, in the coming weeks on the SDK. Um, maybe this, this is one of the things I will consider, so providing at least uh, a DLL. Um, of course, it's open source, so uh, if someone wants to be involved, uh, involved with me and, of course, the Microsoft Azure IoT team into doing some porting uh, on the Compact Framework, I think they are going to be happy to <laughs> accept a new platform into their SDK. Okay, if someone has some additional questions, you can write them down uh, in the in the tool. Um, just some more uh, information. 
um, the libraries and the other components you may need to, to uh, use the Azure IoT app are currently not included into, the, uh, into our images by default. Uh, first of all, because of course we still can't evaluate how many customers are going to need them. Uh, and uh, second point um, is that including all the components to support the different protocol can increase the size of the images. So at the moment we are providing instruction about how to build them and so on. Uh, also another point is that this SDK is of course maintained by Microsoft, so the rate uh, of updates from, from, from their side can be different from, from what we do on our images. So keeping them separate will allow you to update the SDK contents as soon as Microsoft is releasing something. Um, other question, um, yeah, uh, about uh, Android support. Uh, what is currently included into Azure uh, IoT SDK is um, a generic Java SDK. Um, so it's not specifically targeting Android. Uh, of course, on Android you can use Java, but uh, some of the uh, underlying implementation can be different. Um, as far as I remember, um, things like um, sockets and these connectivity uh, layers should be um, the same uh, as the standard Java implementation. Um, but of course, this may require some effort um, at least to, to build the SDK. Uh, I haven't been checking the Java uh, SDK lately, so first step will be go to the uh, GitHub repository into the Java folder and check if they uh, provide some Android specific support. Uh, it was not there the last time I checked, so I'm not too optimistic about this, but of course this is something you may have to do, and then you should look into the um, Java SDK. Um, an alternative, and this can be worth also for C Sharp, uh, is to implement the protocol. Um, there is, a, a, for example, for C Sharp on the Compat framework, uh, a library for um, .NET, for Azure, sorry. Uh, I don't remember the exact name. It has been designed by Microsoft, also some MVPs like Paolo Patierno have been involved into it, and uh, for sure it provides ways to connect to the service bus and to the event hub, and the connectivity layer of the IoT hub is not that different, so this can be a different solution, implementing it on top of the protocol. And of course in the SDK source code and documentation you will see information about uh, how to build your HTTP request or your uh, AMQP or MQTT message to connect. Okay, another question, if um, there is a specific payload format uh, for Azure IoT, uh, there isn't any payload restriction if you use only the IoT Hub, as we did on the um, parking lot demo. On the parking lot demo, honestly, the protocol is super simple, it's just some uh, strings. Uh, we decided to keep it this way because it's much more easier to debug and also to understand in the source code. Um, of course, you can implement something more optimized. If you plan to use the um, monitoring suite or the other, let's say, pre-built solution, then uh, you need to uh, implement their own payload format that is based on JSON. Um, other question, can Azure IoT be used for the remote software update on the target? Um, yes and no would be my, my uh, best answer. Um, uh, I mean, probably you may use the um, um, messaging to um, collect information about the software release running on each device. Uh, you can also have the list of devices accessible so you can match them with uh, an, IO, an, an OS version. Uh, you can send them a notification about an update. Probably splitting uh, firmware over multiple messages uh, and so on may increase the complexity of a software update. Uh, it can be doable. I'm not saying that it's, it's not doable. It's not 
uh, designed in, so there are no specific features around it in the SDK. And uh, honestly, if I need to implement this myself, uh, probably I would have a notification messaging telling the device, okay, you have a new version, you can download it from here. And the download may be using FTP or HTTP. Uh, also because consider that you pay the Azure IoT app based on the number of messages you are sending. Uh, so if it's just regular communication, maybe your device is just sending a few messages per hour. Uh, if you need to split uh, multiple megabyte up, um, update uh, into messages, then this can also increase the cost. And uh, depending on the, uh, the pricing um, offer you, you choose, uh, you also have a limit on the, on the maximum number of messages you can exchange in a day. So if you upload or if you, sorry, if you send the update to many devices at the same time, then you can reach this, this limit. So honestly, I will not use the hub for the download itself. I will use it to get information about the version and to uh, notify devices that an update is available. Okay, I see a couple of questions popping up. The first one is the price for the Colibri VF61. Um, honestly, I don't know. Uh, and the point is, uh, it really depends on uh, uh, from which country and which um, uh, kind of uh, money you want to buy it. But the easiest way to do it is to go on uh, www.toradex.com. There is a link to our web shop. We sell directly from the web shop. We don't have any distribution, any uh, layer in between that it's uh, creating some kind of obscure pricing structure. You can go there, you can see the price, you can see also the discount for quantity. So our pricing is completely transparent. Uh, the other question is about getting the um, link to download the recording. We are going to send an email in the next few days. Okay, if there are not any more questions, uh, we are already 10 minutes after our, <laughs> our talk, about, but of course it's not an issue for me, but I don't want to steal any more of your valuable time. Oh, uh, we have another question, so uh, you mentioned the use case of sending data from Azure to devices. How could this be implemented on the device uh, when using Windows 10? Um, as, far, as far as I know, there is no web service available. Um, uh, actually, what happens, uh, even if you use um, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, is that the device is connecting to the hub. Um, your application is uh, always connected. And um, even if you use HTTPS, the underlying implementation is polling the server. Uh, you can, of course, configure a polling time ranging from a few seconds to even hours, depending on the uh, responsiveness you need. Um, so sometimes the device can pull using HTTPS and can download a message that is waiting uh, in the queue. Um, as I said in the presentation, queues are persistent. So uh, if you put a message in the queue, even if the device is not connected in that exact moment uh, is going to get the message as soon as it connects. And uh, which it, it HTTP, this means as soon as it pulls. Um, if you need responsiveness, so you want to deliver a, a command or something like this, and you want to have your device reacting in one second, something like this, probably switching to uh, AMQP or, or MQTT is it's the best solution. But anyway, the communication is bi-directional. So even on Windows 10 or any operating system, even if you don't need to have a publicly accessible IP, uh, you don't need to keep any port open on the device. The client is starting the connection, but as soon as the connection is there, communication is bi-directional. OK, if you don't have any other question, I think we can uh, close the webinar here. You can find more information on our websites, uh, the official website, the developer website, and if you have some questions specifically for um, Azure IoT SDK, uh, you can uh, post it on the community website. Uh, maybe tag it using Azure IoT or whatever tag we uh, you can associate with it, and I'm probably going to to try to reply to it. Thank you very much for your time and. 
see you at the next webinar.